I definitely made a mess. <laughs> so maybe foam in the car and all the stuff inside might not be the best idea. All right guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we're in the garage today again and what we're gonna be doing today is another wash video. And this is just not a regular wash video. If you guys seen the struggles on this channel, we haven't had a pressure washer in quite some time because you know, I live in the condo. Now I live in a house and we're gonna be able to use one of the best pressure washer machines you can get for under $500. And let's get to it. While we do this raw wash video, I know a lot of you guys like this and we'll continue with it. And if I have anything else to say about the machine itself, you'll see my first reaction of using it. Um, I already had it hooked up to my hose and also my 50 foot hose with a custom, I guess, setup right now. And this is the custom setups I've seen from Cars with Keeve and also some other detailing channels. I'm gonna list everything I'm using in the description. And right now, I'm telling you guys right now, Active gave me uh, a discount code that you guys can use to get yourself 10% off and there's only a limited amount. So I think it's gonna, there's maybe like 25 spots. So if you do pick one up, use that discount code, it's gonna save you some money on your end. So let's get to it. Obviously the first thing we're gonna start with is the wheels. All right, so as you can see, we're gonna start with the wheels first. One of the first things that I always start with, um, there's many different ways of washing your car. And this is the way I'm gonna wash my car. So I'll take you guys along the process. You guys seen this many times before. What's really different is this stool. This is Adam's polish stool. It actually has a good height where it keeps you um, right where you need to be. Cause I think when I was sitting on top of these buckets, it was just elevated too high. So it was kind of uncomfortable. But at least with this stool, it keeps me on a level plane where it's easy to clean my wheels. And I've mentioned this before, it's gonna be a lot easier to clean this car and also the wheels now. All right guys, so I know a lot of you guys follow Obsessed Garage. Unfortunately, this is not an Obsessed Garage setup. This is gonna be a McKillen's um, pressure washer wand. And right now I'm using the white tip from Active. And this is one of the most, I guess, safe for car washing tip to use right now. Um, one of the first things you should always do is to spray away from the car making sure that the tip doesn't fly out. And as you can see, that's a nice stream of water. And let's see how it looks. Car washing just got a lot more fun. So, I actually did a pretty good job. And right now I'm using a press all bottle. And I'm, what I'm doing is, like I said, everything I'm using right now, I'm gonna list it in the description, whether I have any links to it and whether I don't have any links to it. The machine is really not that loud, very surprisingly. I think the fun part is gonna be when I actually start foaming the car up. That's gonna be a lot more fun. I know I've used a lot of other things in the past and it wasn't that great, but this time I'm gonna be able to use a foam gun and all that and that's gonna be pretty awesome. So I know in the last wash video, what I had was, I had the garage door open. It was way too bright in here. Um, so at least now I gave you guys some better lighting and hopefully this comes out a lot better than the last, but seems like a lot of you guys like the raw videos of me just washing the car and you're know, just talking about life and stuff, which is pretty cool because I like that too. Um, I think a lot of us, or for me at least, I watch a lot of Obsessed Garage um, back in the day. And if you guys know the story behind of why I got F80 was because, you know, I, randomly I was watching, you know, some car, de uh, car detail and stuff and I saw this guy, um, later to be known as Matt Mormon, Obsessed Garage. And he was, he was washing his car. And what, what it was, it was just so interesting. And it, it's hard to describe. You have to watch his channel to really realize what I mean. And the funny thing is, we're gonna see how much of a mess I make in this garage. I can tell that this is gonna be very interesting. 
Um, I think the video before this, or probably a couple of videos before this, you're gonna see that I went to Cars and Coffee. Cars and Coffee up in Palm Beach, um, it's always a good time, especially if you go with the right people. I know when you go to Cars and Coffee sometimes, when you go by yourself, it's like, it's like going to high school again, right? Trying to, trying to talk to random people that you don't know and to see if that conversation clicks. Um, but if you go with the right crowd, the right type of people, I went with George. Um, he has a um, Nardo Gray F80 M3, and I went with Walter. And we had a really good time. It was more like checking out the new cars, checking out different cars. And what we heard from Walter is he's selling his F80 M3. Um, his F80 M3 has been on this channel for a little bit. You guys seen the progression and it's funny, this guy's getting rid of his car. All right, so I'm interrupting this video to thank our sponsors and that's coming from Simply Carbon Fiber. Simply Carbon Fiber, as you know, has been a big sponsor of the channel. Um, as you can see right here, they provided me a forged carbon fiber phone case and I think it looks pretty good. You know me, I'm not a big fan of forged carbon when it comes to the car. When it comes to the phone cases and accessories, I think that looks pretty sharp. They're gonna be having a Black Friday sale going on and they're gonna be providing all these details and sales going on right over here from these dates. Definitely check that out to save yourself some money and also your significant others because you know you're gonna have to buy some gifts for them anyway. But I wanna thank them for sponsoring this video. Let's jump back into the video and get this car dialed in. I asked them why. I don't know what it is, I guess it's because, well, I do know what it is. He's been seeing the progression of the F80 and seeing um, the peak of it. And right now he's at his peak. There's really nothing else that he wants to do for the car. And which is something that I wanted to talk about too in this, uh, I guess, wash method kind of type of video is that Oops. So I talked to Walter, and this is a topic I wanted to bring up. So when you mod your car, right? You mod your car, I highly recommend, it depends, if you're a content creator, then yes, you should probably create content pretty quickly. But if you're, sorry, left-hand problems, I gotta go on the other side. If you're not a content creator and you're a person that likes modifying cars, um, I highly suggest that you take it easy because sometimes when you go way too fast on modifying a car, it gets boring after. Um, for me, my F80, I, I definitely took my time on modding that car and finding the right selections. And sometimes you fall lucky. For example, a lot of the parts that you saw towards the end of my build was from a buddy of mine. He was, he was getting rid of his car and he was going to an AMG GTR which is a incredible car, different, uh, I guess, different class of cars. And he was getting rid of his parts, inventory version two intakes, um, agency power, top mount intercooler. He was getting rid of his rear diffuser. Actually, no, yeah, he got rid of his rear diffuser and a whole bunch of other parts, charge pipes, um, oil thermostat, and all those parts, so inside skirts. So we worked at a deal and I bought all those parts, um, but I slowly added them on. Obviously, if you have opportunity of finding something like that, like a deal wise, jump on it because in the long term, it may save you money, but you shouldn't put yourself in a bad position. A bad position, like overextend yourself on purchasing things you really don't need. Um, as of right now, I'm in a brand new house or it's about a year old. And there's a lot of things I want to buy for the house. And there's also a lot of things I want to buy for the car. But I need to pick what's more important. Probably the house stuff. But um, don't get me wrong, I'm still looking for suspension. That's one of the things I want to do for this car. Because the stock ride height is pretty bad. As I've mentioned it many times in many different videos. And you can see right over here, this is pretty clear. Three inches or three fingers of a wheel gap. And this is how us car guys measure things out with fingers. So as you can see, there's definitely a, a awkward um, ride height in the front. The rear is actually not too bad. It, it just needs a slight drop, but um, 
again, it's something I'm finding, I'm trying to find the right one. I don't wanna switch suspensions multiple times, which would be cool for content, but I just don't have that much time to just keep doing that. And it gets kind of costly and I'm not made of money. So I'm getting this car cleaned up. I got my in-laws coming into town and it's actually gonna be my, my, my father-in-law's first time seeing this car. Um, I know I had this car for quite a little bit, um, so he hasn't seen it yet. My mother-in-law did see it and she loves the color, thinks it's a very unique um, kind of color combo. They're not really car people, but um, yeah, they, uh, they, like my, they enjoy my passion, so to say. They support it, which is pretty cool, just like my wife. As you can see, all that time, it took me to wash that. Um, one thing that you shouldn't neglect is the brakes. The brakes itself, it's a massive brake caliber. So I like to spray some product on there and take a brush and kind of just brush it. I'm trying to get into those edges so it doesn't get kicked on. Again, this for me is like therapeutic. Obviously, I wish it was a little bit cooler in here, which I don't think we're doing AC this year, but maybe, who knows, next year. That was a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. So I can see why cars are key. If you're watching this, I can see why you love testing out different brush washers. So I do like about this hose, this is from Uberflex. And what's really interesting about this is that this is not your typical garden hose or anything like that. When you um, try to kink it up as in fold it where the, the, the water stops going through, you can't do it. It takes a long time for you to kind of get through that. The garden hose I have outside that's connected to all this um, things going on right now, that kinks up all the time, which is why I had to unravel the whole thing. Eventually I'm gonna get a uh, faucet over here where I can connect my pressure washer and kind of make it more seamless. Um, but as of right now, I didn't do that, so. I don't know, this is gonna be a lot more fun. Uh, washing my car is gonna be a lot more enjoyable. One of the most important things too is that the reason why you don't wanna do it out in the hot sun is because, look, I don't, have, I don't have my water treated. It's hard water, so to say right now. So I don't have anything that's filtering the water to get all the, the hard minerals out of it. So with that being said, on a day like this where it's really bright and sunny, it is not ideal to wash the car. Can you do it? Yes, but what are you susceptible of? You're more susceptible of getting water spots. And water spots are something that it's probably well known and it's probably well seen because uh, you'll see a lot of cars out there with marring and all that stuff and you'll see um, water spots and the water spots are just um, horrible to deal with. They're absolutely difficult to take out and um, not a really big fan of that. So what I will say about this pressure washing machine is that it only turns on when you use it. I've heard of other pressure wash washing machines where it keeps priming itself. And that gets kind of annoying. You don't want to hear your pressure washer going off when you're not using it. Um, I can tell you this, the first time I've ever used a pressure washer when I was up in New York, um, my father bought one. It was a Husky pressure washer. And my father bought a Husky pressure washer. It was our first one that we had at the house. It was one of those big ones that you stand up and it has two wheels and you tilt it over to move it. It was one of those. Um, I can see the purpose of that. Obviously, he bought it for me to clean the concrete, which I had fun with. It was fun, you know, messing around with water. But it sucked. It absolutely sucked. After probably a year or two, it started leaking um, from all different places. And this is back in like early, 
2000s where, you know, it was, technology wasn't there yet. But uh, what I will say though, there's a lot of different pressure washers out there. Um, Active is one of the best pressure washers or pressure wash companies that stays ahead of the game. Um, when I reached out to them to see if they wanted to partner up with, you know, on this channel, I knew that if I had the opportunity, this would be a good company to uh, partner up with. And as you know, I don't really partner up with companies that I don't stand behind. I get emails from some random companies from like China and things like that. And they always ask me, and to be honest, like I'm not gonna work with companies like that. Not because, you know, I think I'm better than that, but I think if I put my name behind something and it doesn't live up to par, I can't live with that. I can't give you guys um, any options out there that doesn't work for me. As you can see right now, this, this pressure washing machine has been making car washing a lot more fun. Um, I'm glad I reached out to them and I'm really excited that they're all actually, like I mentioned early in the video, they're giving me the opportunity to give you guys a discount. Not a lot of companies do that. Um, and it's not like they need to give people discounts to sell their products. Um, when they release this product out, there's a lot of uh, other car detailers on social media that basically review this. And I can tell you this, it's highly, highly rated. And based on my first 10 minutes, 15 minutes of using it, I could, con I could agree. It's, it's been pretty, pretty awesome. Pressure washering a car is gonna help speed up your process when you wash a car because you're gonna have that, um, the assistance from the power of the pressure washer to kind of get all the soap off. With the regular garden hose, you dump a lot of water with not a lot of power behind it. And in the long term, you're probably gonna spend more water and that increases cost. Um, what I will say though, is that this is something that's economical. It's very portable. There's multiple different ways you can um, put this on. Right now I have it on the ground. I didn't have time to um, get it mounted onto the wall. Um, that's something I probably want to do. We'll see, you know, I'll mount it on a shelf or something like that. I know a lot of people do do that. Um, but what I will probably do too is get a hose reel, whether it's mounted on the wall or on the floor. Um, it does get kind of pricey because it depends if you're more, you know, savvy with your hands. And I could be the first to agree. I'm not that guy. And I think some people sometimes are like afraid to say that they suck with things like that. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I suck with doing things like that. You know, you know, installing things onto the concrete wall or the drywall. I'm sure I could watch a couple YouTube videos and figure it out, but I'd rather pay somebody to be honest, because I'll probably mess it up. And if I do mess it up, I'm gonna make it a lot worse. But it's okay to to admit that. I think uh, if you agree, let me know in the comments. But uh, depends on how this does. I'm hoping that this doesn't really make too much of a mess. I know that the, the pressured wash water is gonna make water fly all around a little bit more than your garden hose. So that's gonna be pretty much interesting. But I do like making these videos inside the garage. Even though I'm in a house, in the garage, I have that little privacy because the garage door's closed. I can talk freely in here. Um, I don't have to worry about my neighbors thinking I'm crazy, but who cares? And this, this amount of pressure that's coming out of the machine right now, it's not gonna hurt your hands. It's not enough to damage your fingers. Obviously don't put it next to it like this, but go from a safe distance and you can kind of feel it out. Also, let me know, guys, how many of you guys will actually wash your car inside your garage?
kind of curious to see if you guys do the same too. And if you guys have any tips or tricks throughout the process that you do, uh, let me know in the comments because I'm sure other people read it. I do read it too. And I know some of you guys on the last video gave me some suggestions of what products that you guys use for drying agents, things like that. Um, I do take that into account and kind of look into it. As of right now, for the drying agent, I still have like three gallons of bead maker and I'm still gonna use it. I'm not gonna waste it. Even though it's not the best, I'm still gonna use it. Just because I wanna get rid of it, I'm not gonna waste it. So what I will say though is active, right? So they had a V52 pressure washing machine. Um, with that pressure washing machine, total different look to it, right? This one looks a lot more sleeker and slim fit and actually looks pretty good, um, especially with the nice um, 2.0 logo on the outside. With the V52, it was still a good looking machine and it was more aesthetically, they're both aesthetically appealing for your garage. Uh, I think one of the issues was, when I mentioned early in the video is that us guys and, and car guys, we like to modify things. When we like to modify things, we like to put um, longer hoses, different tips, a lot of those different things on the old machine. It wasn't, it was surging, it was having not a lot of difficulties, but there was some notable differences when you added these things on. So Active as a company, what they did was they redesigned the whole machine, they made it a lot better. And from what the reviews I saw, um, I don't get really too technical on this channel because it's just not who I am. And I'm not gonna tell you all those things that are very technical, but from what I saw is that this machine does a lot more things better than the previous um, machine. And is there really that much of a big difference besides it um, being able to accommodate those larger hoses? No, everything else is pretty much, um, they perform equally from what I've heard. But the big difference is that if you're gonna be modifying your machine, um, with not the recommended hoses, like a longer hose, things like that. This is gonna be your better choice. Um, this is a little bit more expensive than the VE52, but for that price point, might as well spend a little more money to have something that's gonna be um, long-term better for you. And what's so good about this new machine is that when they redesigned it, they looked into the customer standpoint, right? Why is a customer gonna pay for a machine and not have it last. So I think the normal hours on a typical pressure washer machine, for example, like your Huskies, your Craftsman, things like that, and your generic pressure washer machines, a lot of those only last for about 100 hours of usage. Um, what Active did, and they put their name behind it, is that they actually made this machine to be rated at 200 hours. Um, if you're gonna be a type of person that uses it for your own business, as in like uses to wash your cars for your clients, for more commercial usage, you're probably gonna avoid your warranty and that's not gonna be what they're known for. But for the regular consumer that does this, you know, for a weekend wash, um, or, you know, you clean your, your patio and, and, and household, you know, to, you know, chores, yeah, it, it's gonna cover you under that warranty, but, I'm sure some people are gonna be um, looking a way to get around the system, but that's just how people are. Again, the benefits are having a pressure washing machine that's able to accommodate for all these special modifications, so to say, like longer hose. For example, if I wanted to put a 100 foot hose on this pressure washing machine, it can handle it. Other machines might surge and might have issues with it, um, but this one could handle it, so. If like, for example, if I were to mount this pressure washer on the back of my garage and wash my car in the driveway and have the 100 foot, it would be okay. But I bought a 50 foot hose, which is fine, but I'm probably gonna mount it towards my whole bunch of cleaning supplies right behind the camera. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of cool that the chair does match the car, <laughs> black and red. But I can tell you this, my buddy, Raphael, and I mentioned this in the last wash video, he's the one that has the 2000 horsepower GTR. We washed his car at, oh, and both in my car too. 
he has a pressure washer machine too, but he has one of those industrial type, the ones that are gas powered. What I personally don't like about a gas powered one, I mentioned it to him, but again, he has his own preference, is that when you use it, you have to leave it on running. It's not like this where you just pull the trigger and just go with it. That one, you have to prime it, turn it on, and it's loud. You know, if you ever heard like a go-kart, it sounds like a go-kart. Um, for me, I wouldn't be able to do that, and I don't want to smell the fumes either. Obviously, this is electric. You're not going to have any of those issues, which is why this is more ideal. But since we're on the topic of just talking random things today, and it seems like this is something that's enjoyable, and I appreciate all the positive feedback that you guys have been giving me. This channel has has grown since getting the G80 a little quicker than I expected. And I'm very appreciative of that. And I'm excited to, for what's to come. But one of the things that I've noticed is that South Florida is very rare to see native Floridians. It seems like everybody in South Florida is from New York or the tri-state. I myself, I'm originally from New York, um, born and raised in New York. You know, came from, you know, two immigrant parents. I mentioned this on my Every Builds a Story. My father came to this country. He's a Chinese Cuban. Um, so it's very, very different, right? When you see an Asian guy like me speak fluent Spanish, sounds like Ricky Ricardo. It's pretty cool. Um, I just wish he taught me Spanish. But my mom also, she was born in Hong Kong but raised in Venezuela. So she speaks three languages too. Again, they never taught me because my parents got divorced. So I went to my grandparents. I know a little bit of Cantonese. And if any of you people try to come in and talk to me about it, I'm not gonna talk to you in Cantonese because it, it's tough. You know, it's, it's I, I, I understand it more than I speak it. Um, but yeah, born and raised in, in New York City, Queens. You know, I grew up to the age of like six in Umhurst. Elmhurst, New York, which is a, um, a part of Queens, New York. And, you know, I don't really remember too much about it, you know, because after that we went to Fresh Meadows. And Fresh Meadows is where I lived most of my life until I moved to Florida. Fresh Meadows has been, it's quite quiet town, so to say. Met a lot of cool people. Actually, um, a lot of my close friends that lived in the area that lived in Fresh Meadows, they all moved out of it. They all moved to like Mississippi. Uh, some people have moved to Florida too. So again, a lot of people are leaving New York City and I can see why, because it gets so expensive. But for me, when I was like 22, 23 years old, um, I guess what I was thinking was more of the future. And during that time, houses were still insanely expensive in New York, and now they're still insanely expensive. To be able to afford a house there, you know, back in the day, and like when I was 22 years old, about almost nine years ago, because you're hitting, I'm, I'm 33 years old. Um, houses back then that were like a little 1,500 square foot house was like $800,000. Way too expensive for something that you're not getting your value for. For me, I just didn't, I couldn't see myself paying that much money for a house that needed a lot of work, things like that. But let's rinse this off. All right, here's the tricky part. Trying to rinse this car without making a mess onto that side and also anywhere else. So I'm gonna take my time. I'm gonna go through this with you guys. This will be my process to share with you. And let's get to it. Pretty nice. This is really nice. And this car doesn't really need to be rinsed that much because it's nearly not that dirty. But again, I want to get it clean for my 
uh, father-in-law that's coming into town. So I'm gonna throw the camera onto the other side and then in a little bit we're gonna foam it and that's gonna be the fun part. Again, we're not gonna be using <laughs> the obsessed garage stuff. I know you guys are probably like, what the hell is this guy doing? Um, this was highly recommended from Cars with Keith, one of my YouTube buddies. Um, he has a channel that's dedicated to, you know, car washing and a lot of things uh, related to that. So when I was talking to him, he recommended the MJJC and I'm just going to use it right out of the box. This is brand new, as you can see. Um, sure, the MTM is on a different level and that would probably be a lot better. Or maybe, I don't know how much better, but it is something that's really um, expensive. Maybe not much more, but again, I wanted to support another fellow small YouTuber and he recommended this, so I'm gonna use this. All right, let's see how this looks. Ooh. Okay, hear me out. I'm just getting the use of it. This, the tip of this, I guess, adjusts your spray. This, on top, adjusts how much foam you get. Making a big mess. That's incredible, look at this. That's like shaving cream. It's safe to say this is absolutely fun, but it's safe to say that I'm making a mess. All right, check this out. I just sprayed this prior, maybe like five minutes ago, and you can see that the soap still is clinging onto the paint. I definitely made a mess. So maybe foaming the car and all the stuff inside might not be the best idea. But again, I'll clean it up anyway, it's not a big deal. This is, uh, like I said, this is a lot of fun, but there's a lot of a mess. Thank God my wife's not home. <laughs> um, again, what's so good about having the car PPF is that I don't really have to worry about swirl marks. I'm still gonna take precaution when I'm washing the car. Um, what I'm probably gonna do later is sweep all this suds out. But what's so good about the pressure washer is the pressure washer actually gets a lot of the dirt and dust off with the pressurized water. And which is why I don't have to worry too much about any of the gunk that's still left on. Don't get me wrong, there's still it is gonna be like bugs that get stuck onto the paint, which obviously you need the mitt to agitate it. But again, this is just a learning experience. I'm taking you guys along the process. I just learned that foam in the car is a lot of fun. Also, it's a lot of mess. Do I regret it? Nah, I don't. It's fun. I'm actually having a, a lot of fun with this. And again, you can see that the water is just sloping down because the garage is on a slope. If you guys like these videos, let me know. I know that the last time I asked you guys and you guys liked them, uh, maybe next time we'll do it outside and we'll figure a way to do it. But the soap I'm using right now is Adams Polish's um, car shampoo. And this is a soap that I've been using for a little bit, for a long time. It's really not that bad though. 
It just looks worse than it is. I know the last time I washed my car inside the garage, there was less of a mess because we didn't foam the car up and we just used a two bucket method. We're still using a two bucket method today, but we're using a lot more soap. It was fun, not gonna lie. Absolutely fun. And I can tell you this, do you really need a pressure washer to wash a car? No, you don't. Does it help out? Yes. Is this something that I would recommend? Absolutely. Again, for this holiday season, you know what you could ask your significant other for? A pressure washer, a foam gun, or foam cannon, and the necessary attachments. What I do like about this pressure washer is that it's compact. You know, back in the day when I used to have, you know, the, my first pressure washer, that thing was massive. It would take up a lot of room in the garage. You know, so, you know, with technology these days, they're able to fit everything they need in a small compact machine, as you can see right there. It's weird, you know, when you wash your own car in your own garage, it's kind of like taboo because it's not really supposed to be, well, not really not supposed to be. It doesn't really happen too often. Again, key tip, you want to, just like that, how the tip just shot out, you don't want it to happen to you. That was not planned. That was me just being lazy, not double checking. But again, you don't want to, you, you don't want to point it at a car before you start changing tips out or after you change tips out. You want to point it at the ground, making sure that this doesn't fly out. As you saw, it just flew out right there. What that could do is damage your paint, scratch it, and ruin your day. So now we're good. It's making rinsing the car off so much easier. All right, so check this out. It's not horrible. It's not that bad. Um, it is gonna take a little longer to dry than last time. But do I have any regrets? Absolutely not. This was absolutely fun. Do I really think this setup is an awesome setup? Absolutely. The Active 2.0 did an amazing job on making this so much easier to clean. When you have pressurized water, it allows you to apply the soap on in a nice, even manner, and also allows you to take off the soap so much more easier. Um, I'll list everything, like I said, that I'm using in this wash in the description. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. Um, but we're just gonna dry the car off. And one of the methods I like to use is to use some bead maker when the car is wet. So the reason why I like to apply it on wet is because it allows me to avoid the streaking. The streaking happens when it dries up prematurely before you dry it and it gets really annoying to take off. I know some people mentioned on, uh, on the previous video what you guys recommend that you use for a drying agent. Um, I'll look into that later on, to be honest. I just have so much of this product because <laughs> you kind of see when I get into things, I go kind of overboard, especially with products and things that's of that nature. But um, right now I'm using a G-Technic drying towel and this is what I'm gonna use to basically apply the bead maker on and I'm gonna use a different towel to um, finish it off essentially. So I'm not gonna lie, like I like using different products to just test them out 
And right now I'm using a um, Adams Polishes drying towel. And this one's basically to uh, finish it off. Is there one method to wash a car or to do anything? No, not really. There's multiple different methods. But this is what works for me. And if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, it is what it is. With this product, you could go heavy on it because it is, in my opinion, very economical. It's not too expensive. So right now I'm using my Sony a7S III with my Sony Sigma lens. And looking at the camera right now, I'm looking at the paint. This is a very good, um, I guess, representation of the color. I think this camera does a good job of representing the color on film and on camera. So I know sometimes when I film this car, especially when I first picked up the car, the color was all off. I don't know what it was with the camera, but it didn't look like Emola Red. But, you know, I'm using this camera now and it's doing a great job of showing what the true color is. So there's a video that's, that came out before this video or it's coming out after this video. Look, you, you buy your car for yourself, for nobody else. You don't buy it for other people on social media. Sure, you will wanna show your passion for people on social media because that's just us just trying to show our passion, right? But you don't buy for anybody else. So whether you like the highly controversial cars that are coming out, you like it for yourself. You don't like it for anybody else. So don't worry about what really other people think. And I think I mentioned in the video, when this first came out, I bought it for myself. I didn't care about what everybody else think. I know people hated the front. The front was very controversial. I didn't care. You know, that's why I kept it hush hush. And also to give you guys a grand reveal. But I told the most important people at the time, and that was my wife and a couple of my close friends. And they didn't try to persuade me in any other way um, because I know how they are. They're very supportive of whatever I do, regardless of how ugly it could be. So um, I know they haven't, well, my, some of my close friends haven't really seen the car in person. And some of my close friends were actually in, um, in Mississippi, Tennessee. But they may possibly see it in February when they come to the invasion of Orlando, which I think is gonna be an epic, epic event. But pretty much, I'm gonna finish up this video off camera. I'm gonna finish drying this car up. And then towards the end of the video, I'll give you guys some cinematics with obviously the lights and some of the B-roll. Again, pretty much a raw video. And this one has a little bit more higher quality because now we have better lighting. Again, we won't have lighting up on top until later on. I just got other things to do. But I did buy these studio lights because I do, you know, plan on using a lot more with in my home office, things like that. And also showcasing products, which you guys seen early in the video. Um, I enjoy making these type of videos. It definitely takes a lot longer to wash a car when I'm filming. And I obviously have to edit it for you guys and I don't mind, but um, if you guys like these type of videos, let me know in the comments. Um, please hit the thumbs up. It definitely helps my small channel grow. Um, and if you guys have the input, let me know in the comment section. But other than that, I wanna thank the team over at Active for supplying me one of the best pressure washing machines. And if you guys have any questions about the products or anything I did use in this um, segment, let me know. But I'm gonna leave the link to purchase your Active pressure washing machine. Again, it's, they're offering you guys from me 10% off. And I think it's a limited amount. So definitely check that out. I wouldn't sleep, uh, snooze on it because I know that at one point they did sell out of it. Um, but uh, thankfully right now, they're giving me the opportunity to give you guys 10% off. Just wanna show you what's left. Again, it's really, it's not horrible. It's not that bad. There is more water, like I said, on the other side. And then we're this side where I wasn't really messing around. I just did one coat of foam. There's really not much of a mess. When it comes to this side again, this is when I did probably like three coats of foam and this is where it becomes a little bit more messier. But again, it wasn't really that bad. Um, minus me acting like a fool on this side. Again, I just did it because it's fun 
And if I were to do it again, one coat should not make this much of a mess. Again, so going forward, I think I may still continue to wash my car in the garage. All right, I guess we're really not done. This is another update. So I just finished wrapping up all that hose. And again, I really do need a hose reel, which that would come down the road. But once I was done cleaning up, pretty much all the water is gone. All the water that's in the garage that you guys saw that was a mess, it's all gone. So again, once I opened the garage door up, a lot more airflow and it pretty much cleared up pretty well. So again, if I had the garage door open the whole time and did it that way, it may have been a lot less of a mess. But um, I just did it for uh, video purposes. I had the garage door semi-closed and I had the garage with the lights on. Mm -hmm. 